So a question I've been seeing pop up is whether I should use Sequelize, Typeorm, or Prisma in my project. So in this video, I'm going to share some of my thoughts with each one of those and uh, which one I'm currently using and what I like and dislike about each one. Uh, hopefully give you a better idea on which one you should be choosing for your project. All right, so we're going to start off with Sequelize. This is the one that I started off with at the very beginning when I got into Node and backend development, and I use this as pretty much my first ORM, and I would say it is very solid. Um, this is one that's been around longer than both Type ORM and Prisma, and this is used by quite a bit of companies and people in general, and it is solid and mature. Now with that said, um, my experience with it was meh, as my experience with most of these types of software is um, kind of just meh. Uh, it, the documentation was not my favorite with this library. Um, specifically, I remember having a very hard time just learning it at the beginning too. One of the confusion points for me was when you set up relationships with SQLize. Uh, for example, here they set up a relationship between a project and a task. They then add all these functions onto the entities. So set tasks, get tasks, um, and I believe there's way more than that too. Um, and then the, the names of these functions are based on like the name of the uh, entities and so, or the models and like figuring out what those are um, was a little, uh, it was a little complicated at first slash not sure what uh, stuff to pass into the functions to make them work. Um, and it was just a whole confusion point in general. Um, but I would say if you're using JavaScript, um, they are a solid choice. SQLize would be my choice if you want a JavaScript ORM, um, and I would go with this. The one thing that was really missing for me when I was using this, or I wish that they had, um, was auto migrations or automatically creating migration files. So I came from using uh, Django before. Um, and one cool thing you get in Django is whenever you make a change in one of your models and uh, you can run a script and it'll basically diff the database in your models and then it'll create a migration for you that you can run uh, on the database to get it to where it should be. So that was really handy to be able to do that. SQLize doesn't really have a comparable thing uh, with that so not much I, that was one thing I wish they had now they do have TypeScript support so that is cool um, but I found it to be pretty uh, just I write not uh, anything amazing other thing is they do have some companies that are using SQLize um, so it is used and I would say it's I would say it's just an all-around solid pick um, but uh, I'm not happy using it or and I was kind of I didn't love my experience with it Really the next ORM that I, I used was Type ORM, and this one I had a much better initial experience with. It feels a lot smoother uh, than SQLize. Of course, it is not without its warts though, um, especially with some of the things that, uh, one, of the, one of the points where that I really get into uh, confusion with is the whole connections. And uh, especially when you're getting to naming connections and using multiple connections, it can be quite confusing. Um, so that whole API, I feel like, could be improved. And their docs are not fantastic. Um, that's another place where I think they could do a much better job. Some of it is uh, very lacking and very confusing. Uh, so the documentation aspect of both these libraries was pretty underwhelming and can uh, basically increase the learning curve of both of them. Um, but one of the things I really liked about Typeform was the uh, integration with TypeScript is much better than SQLize and I liked that. Um, and I also really enjoyed uh, kind of like the amount of support they have. They have just support for a lot of different things in Typeform. Um, and it is uh, pretty well done. Now, of course, there's a bunch of rough edges because they are trying to support so much stuff. Uh, one of the things that I did like is they did have an auto migration tool, uh, kind of similar to Django, but it is kind of jank. Um, it does work for me, but it is not accurate at all. So whenever it creates a migration file, I do have to go in and automatically trim out stuff. Uh, so that is annoying, but it does kind of work. Um, but lately I've been enjoying their query builder. Uh, it's kind of a nice thing in there where if I don't, if I need to do something more complex than a CRUD operation with 
Um, I can't just use, say, uh, user.find or user.create, that sort of thing. Um, I can basically move on and use uh, this. And so how this works is you now have these functions available to you, and it generates a SQL statement that gets run. And this can be very handy when I want to like uh, create a SQL statement based on maybe some if statements. Um, and you can basically build this query uh, builder over uh, a couple lines of code, which is very handy. So I found myself using this lately as a nice escape hatch when the basic CRUD operations just don't cut it. Now this has not been perfect. I have had to go back to just write some raw SQL at some points because it was just way easier than using the qu query builder. Um, but it's a nice layer where you can roll back and do each one. Um, so Typeform I have uh, enjoyed overall. Um, it it's all right. I'm not in love with it, but it gets the job done um, and has been decently solid, but it does have its rough spots. Uh, with that said, this is currently what I have been using um, and uh, what I would recommend if you're using TypeScript and you want a regular old ORM. All right, so let's talk about uh, Prisma next. Um, Prisma is different from the other two um, in a couple big ways. Um, they even say right here that they're trying to replace traditional ORMs and uh, I agree, I wouldn't really categorize them as an ORM. Uh, they do stuff quite differently than how it works with SQLize and type ORM. So how they function is you create this thing called a data model, which is basically kind of like type or kind of like GraphQL syntax. Um, and then what this does is this generates a whole bunch of stuff uh, based off of the types right here. So one of the things that does generate is a whole, uh, it basically creates a Postgres or a MySQL database for you. Um, and I think they're also supporting some other databases in the future. Um, and it also creates an API, a GraphQL API uh, that you can use. Um, so that was the first really nice thing about, uh, I guess, Prisma is they generate this entire uh, schema for you um, and you have to do no work whatsoever. So to just show you, I just copied that data model over um, and I generated uh, the Prisma container and Prisma proxy server and it generated this whole schema for me where basically I have users and you have all the CRUD operations for users, all the CRUD operations for posts, um, and those are the two entities I added. So them generating all this for you is super nice and it's one of those things where it integrates really nicely with GraphQL and it'll save you a bunch of time because you don't have to rewrite all of these, um, you can integrate them with your own GraphQL API. The other thing that I really enjoyed is that you can use uh, their, the way that they load relationships. So for example, I have users and I have posts here and you know we can run this, we can fetch the users and the posts for that. Um, and because it's integrated with GraphQL, um, they can return, you, you know, you can pass the, uh, I guess the same, the same thing that the user is querying, you can pass on to the Prisma proxy server. And I guess I should really mention, uh, that's the other thing about Prisma that's slightly different, is not only that you're writing your stuff in this kind of data model syntax, is they have an intermediate server. So when you use Prisma, you're gonna have your own server, then there's gonna be the Prisma server, and then there's gonna be your database. And so whenever you wanna make a request to your database, you make a request to the Prisma server, and the Prisma server does some stuff, makes a request from the database, gives you the data back. And because they do that in that way, you get some benefits from that. One of them being uh, they're handling data loader stuff for you. So you don't have to go in and touch data loader, at least for the basic stuff. So for example, users and posts here um, is handled for you. So that is very nice. Uh, the general the general like speed of development feels much faster in Prisma compared to type ORM or SQLize or really anything in the ORM category because of how much stuff is generated for you. Uh, so that is definitely my favorite part about Prisma is just way, way less boilerplate that you have to write, which I'm always a fan of. Uh, the other nifty thing is they have this recently come out is a kind of an admin panel. Um, and here you can see basically your database and uh, all the data inside of it. You can also add, search. Uh, if you want to add a new record, we can add a new record and all that fun stuff. So that's just a nice, cool benefit on Prisma. Uh, some of the cons, one, that extra server that you have to have. Um, I'm excited they are going to be coming out with a dockerless version or a serverless version. Well, not serverless in the same sense, but they're gonna get rid of that proxy server. Um, so that is gonna be nice. That way you could go directly to the database. 
Uh, the other thing is I have heard stories of people running into just corner case or edge cases, problems with Prisma, um, and they either had to abandon it or it was hard to do workarounds. Uh, the one that I have personally run into with this is uh, it not working with some Prisma, or sorry, not Prisma, but uh, Postgres columns. Um, this seems to be still an open issue, uh, but when I was first evaluating them, I wanted to use a, I believe it was a TS vector column. Um, in Postgres, and uh, they did not support it at the time. Doesn't look like they're supporting it now either. Looks like there's a few columns. JSONB doesn't look like it's supported yet. Uh, this issue still looks open, but there's some other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the main issue that I ran into with Prisma. But I've also heard other stories of just you may run into some stuff that they have not, they don't support yet. Um, so yeah, so that is what I would say my experience with each one of these would be, I think Prisma is a really great choice if you want to, one, uh, build something quickly and they support um, the columns and databases that you want to use. Um, because right now they are only supporting MySQL and Postgres, I believe right now, whereas I believe SQLize and Typeform cover more databases uh, than they do right now. So that's something to note. Uh, I don't know if MongoDB for Prisma is, I think it may still be in beta. Uh, but either way, I really like that they generate all this stuff for you. Um, that was really, in my opinion, the big advantage of using Prisma over the other two. And one thing that you should consider is just the speed at which you'll be able to generate your GraphQL APIs. Uh, so there you go. That is pretty much how I think about each one and uh, why I would choose each one if I needed to for a project.